In this unit of study, we're going to look at the fall of the Roman Empire in the western portion. In the eastern portion, it will continue, and also the rise of the Catholic Church. The late Roman Empire. The reforms of Diocletian and Constantine. Dalmatian soldier who rose through the ranks in AD 284, Diocletian was a strong-willed army leader and son of a slave, would become the new emperor. He divided the empire into two halves, eastern, consisting of Greece, Asia Minor, Syria, and Egypt, and the west, which included Italy, Gaul, Britannia, and Spain. Each half was to have an emperor called an Augustus, assisted by a vice emperor called a Caesar. The system was called a tetrarchy, rule by four. Each would be divided into 12 dioceses, each headed by a vicar, and each diocese group with four prefectures. Diocletian took the east due to its wealth. This Caesar was Galerius, and the west, Maximin was Augustus, and this Caesar was Constantinus. Each Caesar would marry the daughter of Augustus to ensure a smooth succession. The emperor was exalted again. Diocletian retired to his farm in AD 305, and the Senate was reduced to a power of like a city council. New titles were introduced, illustrious and illustrations as well. So here we see how the empire was divided. So here's the half between east and west, the dividing line. Of course, why is the east going to be more prevalent and more wealthy? Well, it has to deal with right here that will be later on Constantinople, because this is the crossroads of rich goods coming from the east and also goods from Europe coming from the west. It is also very highly defensible. It guards also the Straits of the Black Sea into what eventually is the Mediterranean Sea. Military reforms, reorganization and enlargement of the army. They doubled the size of the army to secure the borders. It increased to 400,000 men, including units filled with some Germans. The army was divided into two parts, garrison for the frontier, and first line of defense and mobile units. Wages for the new trips also added to the already crushing load of taxes. Their borders were, however, safe again. They kept the military and civilian roles separate and not allowed to go from one to another. Economic and social trends. Price and wage control is introduced to control inflation from the bottle of wine to a haircut. To stem runaway inflation, more silver was put into the coins. Diocletian allowed produce to be used in the collection of taxes. The unavailability of coins, Constantine also introduced a new gold coin, the Solidus, a new silver coins that remain in circulation. The position of the Curellus became hereditary, and some had to pay taxes out of their own pocket if not enough were collected. So the decline of the Kuloni, the free tenant farmers, and dependent on f large landowners, were bound to the ant land for tax purposes. This would lead to serfdom of the Middle Ages. So we're seeing all this is starting to happen in what is beginning of the fall of the Roman Empire. Tax pressures on the lower classes, some saw the Visigoths as liberators, as Solivian the priest and Marseille said, I prefer to live freely under the appearance of slavery to be enslaved under the appearance of liberty. Bakers could not leave. They were needed to produce bread for the poor of Rome. Constantine's building program. Constantine would move the capital from Rome to Byzantinum in 330. The new capital had four advantages. First, it was the crossroad for trade. Second, it was easy to defend against attacks. 
Third, it was very strongly Christian. And four, it was located in the most prosperous part of the empire, the East, which he renamed Constantinople. The triumphal arch of Constantine was built in churches for the Christian faith and the first emperor to do so. St. Peter's Basilica on the site where it said that St. Peter was crucified would also be built. Inventing the Domine, no longer called princeps, but Dominus, Lord, to increase the prestige of the emperor, he assumed the manner and costume of the Persian rulers, purple robes, golden crowns with pearls, and scarlet boots. Those before him were forced to kneel and kiss the hem of his robe. For punishments, violent criminals were tied in a leather sack filled with venomous stakes and then cast into the river. For bribery, the hands were cut off with the sword. Allowing a young girl to be seduced, the guardians had molten lead poured down their throats. The Empire's New Religion Under Diocletian, Christians were persecuted. During a sacrifice performed by a priest in front of Diocletian, they could not obtain the desirable omens. They blamed the Christians for blessing themselves, making the sign of the cross. When civil war erected after Diocletian retired, four rivals fought for the rule of Rome. Constantine prayed for divine help to fight his chief rival at the Tiber River. Constantine claimed that he saw a cross and the light bearing the inscription, and in this sign conquer. Constantine ordered artisans to paint white crosses on their shields. He went on and defeated his enemy, Maxitius, at Melvian Bridge. Constantine attributed the victory to the God of the Christians, and in 313 issued the Edict of Milan, in which Constantine ordered the end of the persecution of Christians. In 395, Theodosius, as emperor, made Christianity the official religion of Rome. Church Organizations and Religious Disputes Bishops headed the diocese, or bishoporic. Archbishops ruled Rome, Jerusalem, Alexandria, and Antioch. They were founded by the original apostles. Heresy was the teaching different of the Christian faith. Debate on whether Jesus was divine or human, called Doetism. Donotus was a priest in North Africa and said the sacraments were not valid if administered by an immoral priest. This developed in North Africa's response to the political shifts within the Christian leadership. During the last persecutions, Christians and bishops collaborated with Roman authorities and handed over sacred scripture to be burned tradera to hand over, hence traitor. Arianism was founded by the Egyptian priest Arius, 250-336, who claimed that Jesus was human and thus not truly God. In the Council of Nicaea, 325, attended by Constantine himself, it condemned Arianism. Jesus was said to be the same substance as God, Arius was banished to Illyria, a rough Balkan region. The Nicene Creed was written by Athenaeus of Alexandria, which served to define the most basic beliefs of Latin Christianity. Pope Sylvester did not attend the council. Barbarians overrun the empire. Barbarians. Various German semi-barbaric people overran the empire. Ostrogoths, Vistagoths, Franks, Angles, Saxons, Lombards, and Vandals. Huns from Central Asia kept raiding westward. The Germanic tribes felt the pressure and started moving west. The Visigoths in 376 asked Emperor Valiens to allow them to cross the Danube to farm on the western side in exchange for service in the military. They were mistreated and revolted, and they had to sell their children just for dog flesh. In 378, 
Valens led 40,000 men against the Visigoths in the Battle of Adrianople. This led to a disaster with two-thirds of the Roman army dead, along with the emperor. Theodosius I resettled the Visigoths and even allowed a few to act as commanding officers, commanding the legions exclusive mostly uh, of Germans. So the legions are no longer Roman in nature anymore. No more patriotism. Alaric, the leader of Visigoths, received payment of 5,000 <coughs> pounds of gold and 30,000 pounds of silver in 408 BC for his withdrawal. He would return to sack Rome in 410 after not receiving the northern half of Italy, but he would die shortly thereafter. The Visigoths then would cross the Alps and then to Spain in southern Gaul to settle. Attila the Hun. 100,000 soldiers threatened to conquer the entire region. Attila had sacked 70 cities, but he had failed to take Constantinople. In 452, he advanced towards Rome. Pope Leo I journeyed to Attila's camp near the Po River, and after the meeting, Attila withdrew his forces. The Vandals, on Argesiric, the Lame, crosses the Strait of Gibraltar into North Africa and sees Carthage in 439. After a treaty made between Rome and the Vandals was broken by the Romans, Gaiseric sent a Vandal fleet and sacked Rome and took slaves in North Africa in AD 455. End of the Empire Romulus Augustulus, a 14-year-old boy, became the last emperor of the western part of the Roman Empire. It's usually easy to remember because if you think Rome was founded by a Romulus, it ends with a Romulus. Odasser in 476, a barbarian general, sent Romulus Augustulus into exile. Now with no central power in Rome, this power shift is going to move from being political to religious, from an emperor to a pope. Like most great empires through history, the fall always comes within and not from the outside. So when we look at the multiple causes of the fall of the Roman Empire, first we look at political. The political offices were seen as a burden, not a reward, like the tax collectors. There was military interference into politics, and now you have military strongmen trying to take over. There was constant civil war and unrest. The empire being divided to east and the west, and the east becoming more prosperous, and moving the capital from Rome to Constantinople. Social, there was a lack of interest in public affairs. The people lost their confidence in the empire, and there was no patriotism in, in high corruption, as you could see, as Germans were taken over in the legions. There was a big contrast between rich and poor, dealing off with poor harvests, trade is being disrupted, there is no plunder of wars, there's really no major enemy anymore. Gold and silver is being drained and heading to China. Sound familiar? High inflation due to the, the coinage being worthless and a crushing tax burden. And finally, it's the threat from the outside that finally destroys the empire from Persians and barbarians, low funds for the defense, and problems recruiting Roman citizens who lost their patriotic duty and they had to recruit barbarians to fight. Well, they're only going to fight for money. They're not going to fight for the glory of the country. So who were these Germanic kingdoms that finally did the death blow to the Roman Empire? And that's what we're going to look at now. First with the Ostrogothic Kingdom of Italy. Zeno, the emperor of the Byzantine Empire, had Theodoric act as his deputy to feat and kill Odasser, which he did, but would not act as Zeno's deputy, instead set up rule over Italy. Theodoric tried to synthesize Romans and Germans in his reign. 
Each peoples would fall under their own rule, and the Ostrogoths controlled the army. Resentment came in the way of religion. The Italians saw the Ostrogoths as heretics for falling under the Arian Christianity. Emperor Justinian conquered Italy, destroying Rome and much of the Italian peninsula. The Lombards conquered northern and central Italy and proved to be very harsh rulers. The Visigothic Kingdom of Spain. They gave up their Arianism in favor of Catholic Christianity. Laws preventing intermarriage were dropped. A body of common law began to be developed. However, there was no procedure for choosing rulers. Assassination remained a way of life. The church tried to intervene in the Council of Toledo in 633, but it failed. The kingdom would finally be destroyed in 711 by Muslim Moors. The Frankish Kingdom Clovis ruled much of northern Gaul. The Franks were pagans, but Clovis' wife was a Christian who urged her husband to convert. He led warriors in battle in 496 against another Germanic army. When the battle began to go badly, he appealed to God, saying, I have called on my own gods, but I find that they are far from my aid. Now I call on thee. I long to believe in thee. Only please deliver me from my enemies. The Franks would triumph, and Clovis asked a bishop to baptize he and 3,000 of his warriors. Bishops were needed his help against the Ostrogoths, Visigoths, and the Burgadians, who were Asian, who were Arian, and not Catholic. Clovis had now established a Frankish kingdom under the Mergovian dynasty. Counts ruled over the old Roman city-states. By 600, the Roman Catholic Church had succeeded in winning over many dramatic people. After the death of Clovis, succession and civil war would follow, but the idea of kingship was kept alive. Frankish kingdoms were divided into three parts in the 6th and 7th centuries. Neurostia in northern Gaul, Austrasia in ancient Frankish lands on both sides of the Rhine, and the former kingdom of Burgundy. The fusion of Gallo, Roman, and Frankish peoples to form a new nobility the major domus, the mayor of the palace, who governed the kingdom in the king's name. Charles Martel of Austrasia defeats the Muslims at Portiers at the Battle of Tours in 732. Charles Martel's name was Charles the Hammer. Anglo-Saxon England. Angles and Saxons invaded England in the early 5th century after Rome abandoned the province in the beginning of the 5th century. The Angles and Saxons came from Denmark and northern Germany and carved out kingdoms in places like Kent and southeast England. The Frankish family and marriage. Vergold was German law that had been basically an eye for an eye. This would only lead to blood feud. So to hasten this practice, the family of the wrongdoer had to pay a fine to the family that was injured or killed. This payment could be in cattle or slaves. Compurgation was the swearing and an oath backed by a group of oath givers numbering 20 to 25. Units were enforced through religious rituals. Drinking a beer was the most important of these rituals. It was also the staple of the German diet because of the high amount of carbohydrates that could be consumed. So communal drinking was a way to unite hostile neighbors, but after a lot of drinking, eh, it could lead into brawls. The family was at the center of the social organization. Husband was the head of the family, the woman was secondary, and although they could hold property, and if in childbearing years, were worth more than a man. Engagement ceremony, the future son-in-law, would pay a fee to emphasize parental authority. Virgins were sought for their first marriage in order not to poison the bloodline. For marriage, divorce was allowed. Adultery was punished. The woman, but not the man. 
And the woman, she was in charge of the household chores, raising the children, and the life expectancy was 36 to 40. Around 15% of women would die during childbirth. Development of the Christian Church The Bible contained all the knowledge that was to be needed. Greek became the language of the eastern part of the empire. St. Augustine, one of the Latin fathers of the Catholic Church, the Bishop of Hippo, was educated in rhetoric in Milan. He wrote the Confessions, where Augustine described his life and how he had a religious experience at age 32. In his other work, The City of God, is the Christian philosophy of government and history. Who was to blame for Rome's fall? Not the Christians, said Augustine. That happened long before. In his book, Augustine justifies the use of secular authority and government to protect Christianity. Christianity will survive the death of the Roman Empire. He also said that celibacy is a way to holiness, and sex is only for procreation. St. Jerome translated the Old and New Testaments into Latin and established the Latin Vulgate, the standard text for the Church in the Middle Ages. The Power of the Popes And here we're going to see the transition of the western part of the empire moving from emperor to pope. Jesus had singled out the apostle Peter as the rock on which the Christian church would be built. Peter acts as the first bishop and sets the moral standards and supervises the finances of the local church. Later Roman bishops argue that Peter was the first father, papa, or pope of the church. This argument became known as the Petrine Doctrine in the western part of the church, but not accepted on the eastern. Chalcedon 451 said there was one God and three, and Jesus had two natures, human and spirit, and establishes the orthodox true believing position. As a result, monks and laity rioted in Egypt and Palestine to oppose the unclean Sinan. Church and state, the growing power of church officials. The role of bishops in imperial government increases during the reign of the emperors. Ambrose of Milan, 339 to 397, was the ideal Christian bishop. He threatens to excommunicate, forcing the emperor Theodosius I to do penance at the Cathedral of Milan for the massacre of Thessalonica. Here we see spiritual power gaining over temporal power. The weakness of political authorities in Italy. Pope Leo I gets the credit for turning back Attila the Hun, although thinks it was either possibly a plague or being paid off. Pope Gregory the Great. Gregory increased the power of the popes. In 590, he made the papacy an office of political as well as spiritual power. He dealt with the Lombards, and they would sign a peace treaty. He used revenues to raise armies, repair roads, and also help the poor. He sent Augustine, not St. Augustine, another Augustine, to Britain on a missionary mission in 596. He wrote Dialogues, which was a collection of religious stories and miracles, and pastoral care on how to take care of the new converts. He viewed all of Europe as his responsibility. So here we're starting to see where popes are almost equating themselves as the former emperors. A churchly kingdom ruled by a pope. He had been declared Magnus at his funeral and by the congregation. Monks and their mission. Monks comes from the name from Monacos. It's Latin for meaning one who lives alone. St. Anthony gave up 300 acres of land and went into the Egyptian desert to pursue holiness. St. Simeon Stylite lived in a basket 60 feet up in the air on top of a pillar for 30 years. Everyone, including emperors, sought his advice in an age of individualism. Not the martyr, but denial of pleasures and mystic experiences. 
Their feats attracted followers who wanted to follow in their footsteps, believing this was a way to holiness. One of the most important was the Benedictine monasticism. Benedict established the rule of obedience, chastity, and poverty. He was asked to be the leader of a monastic community, the abbot. He said yes, but only the conditions of the following rules. When one became a monk, they became a monk for life. Eight times a day were set aside for prayer and worship, known as the eight canonical prayers of the Benedictine monk. It was matins, lauds, vespers, tears, sext, nun, and prime, and compline. Seven hours a day was set aside for manual labor, two hours a day for reading the Bible and other Christian works. These rules provided for a workable system for discipline in their lives. They were the best governed communities in all of Europe, and also the most educated. Irish Monasticism St. Patrick was born in Britannia, and at the age of 16, he was kidnapped by Celts to Ireland. He worked as a shepherd. He would escape and then return in 432 and Christianize all of Ireland, which was pagan. Monasteries instead of bishopric units were the church organization for Ireland. Penitentials, the careful examination of one's sins and the penance for committing sin. The Irish monks would end up saving Western civilization through their love of learning of Latin and Greek. Rome's intellectual heritage was preserved. Education became an important part of the monastery. They spoke Latin better than those in the continent, in which these languages were becoming the Romance languages of French, Spanish, Italian, and Romanian. This allowed them to preserve much of the literary tradition that was Rome. Colum Killer, or St. Columba, went to Iona in 563 and was responsible for the conversion of the Picts in Scotland. Just one generation later, Columbanus went even further. He traveled throughout Europe and set up many monasteries, including Luxio and Bobbio. His work abroad also influenced many others who came after him. The Book of Kells is an illuminated manuscript gospel book in Latin containing the four gospels of the New Testament together with the various preparatory texts and tables. Pope Gregory the Great described the illuminated manuscript's living reading of the Lord's story for those who cannot read. It was created in the Columban Monastery in Ireland and may have had contributions from various Columban institutions from both Britain and Ireland. It is believed to have been created circa around 806 AD. The text of the Gospels is largely drawn from the Vulgate, though it is also includes several passages drawn from earlier visions of the Bible, known as the Vetus Latina. It is a masterwork of Western calligraphy and represents the pinnacle of insular illumination. The manuscript takes its name from the Abbey of Kells, which was its home for centuries. Conversions of England. Converted King Ethelbert of Kent used persuasion instead of force and assimilated old pagan practices in the order to coax pagans into the new faith. The use of pagan temples as churches through the purification by holy water. That way they didn't have to destroy it. Roman Christianity from the south would encounter Irish Christianity for the North, and for the next 40 years, both Irish and Roman missionaries were converting in England. Given differences in ritual observance, for example, when is Easter celebrated, the king held the Council of Whitby in 664, where the decision was made to follow the Roman rite. This brought the Irish church one step closer to Rome. Women and Monasticism Double monasteries where monks and nuns attended mass together, but lived in separate quarters. The head of the monastic order was an abbess rather than an abbot. St. Hilda would found the monastery of Whitby in 657. It was a center of learning for female intellectuals, a place not offered anywhere else in Europe. 
Nuns also worked as missionaries. Now Boniface relied on nuns in England to send books and money, as well as themselves, to help convert the Germans. Leoba would found a convent in Buschlethein in Germany. Christian intellectual life in the Germanic kingdoms. Cassiodorus wrote the divine and human readings in a combination of both Christian and pagan literature. There were seven liberal arts. You had the trivium, in which you would learn grammar, rhetoric, and logic, and the quadrivium, in which a student would learn arithmetic, geometry, astronomy, and music. The perennial beam was an ecclesiastical history of the English people begins with Christianity coming to England, the major source of the historical writing of early Anglo-Saxon England. As we see here in the map, the dark green represented the Christianity of circa 300. The light green, of course, was Christianized mostly with a stroke of the pen with uh, Constantine and Theodosius. The purple became Christianized in 600 to 800, 1 AD. But what is interesting is Ireland was the only one that was Christianized by one person. Of course, that was St. Patrick. The Byzantine Empire. This, of course, is the mosaic of the great King Justinian. Now, what is interesting to note out is you notice how their feet are all aligned. And if you look at just this one little part, it might be difficult to see. You see Justinian's foot is on top of another foot. What that is supposed to symbolize, or as you see this bishop right here, is their power over the other one. The reign of Justinian. Determined to restore the old Roman Empire, he had the best general of the late Roman world, Belisarius, who would sail to North Africa, where he defeated the Vandals in two major battles. He would occupy Sicily in 535, finally defeating the Ostrogoths in 552. Italy suffered from the Moor from the conquest than from the previous invasions. This cost the empire in taxes and bribing the Persians. Due to plague, one-third would perish in 540, and economic damage factors proved to be even more damaging to the Eastern Empire than Justinian's overextension. What his greatest contribution is the Corpus Aureus Civilis, the body of civil law, a systematic computation of imperial edicts written by Tribonian. The Digest was the writings of Roman jurists four years later appeared to expedite the legal cases. Institutes was a brief summary of the chief principles of Roman law on reading lists until modern times. Corpus was the last and included all the new edicts issued under Justinian. All these became the basis of the legal system in Western Europe. Under Justinian, homosexuality is going to be outlawed. Intellectual life. Influenced by the traditions of classical civilization, Greek in nature emphasizing the classical models of their own literary work while preserving the ancient works as well. Procopius was the court historian and he wrote wars, which was the war of reconquest of the Western Mediterranean and wars with the Persians in the East. And the secret history was a scathing attack and gossip of the misdeeds of Justinian and his wife, Theodora. The Empress Theodora. Followed in her mother's footsteps, the law had to be changed in order for Justinian to marry Theodora, who influenced Justinian in both church and state affairs, and also strengthened his resolve to deal with the Nike revolt, in which he did because she was seen as an actress and a prostitute. Actually, all actresses at that time were thought to be prostitutes. So that was the law that had to be changed in order for her to marry Justinian and to become the empress. The emperor's building program. Due to the Nike revolt, Justinian was able to check the power of the circus factions, which were blues and greens, 
that left 30,000 people dead caught in the circus. This would be almost similar to you have like you have two big football team fans like Florida and Florida State, and they get so violent politically they go and they kill each other. But he was able to rebuild Constantinople after the Nika riots, which destroyed the city. He also built public baths, roads, bridges, law courts, and especially churches, 32 in all. The most famous was Hagia Sophia, Holy Wisdom. And once it was completed, Justinian said, Solomon, I have outdone thee. He also had a hippodrome of 60,000 seat amphitheater built for gladiator fights, but mostly for chariot races. So this map, as you can see, depicts Justinian Empire before he would take over, and then the areas he was trying to add that would include the part of trying to regain the old western part of the empire. From Eastern Roman to Byzantine Empire, overextended the empire to large to protect the empty treasury and smaller populations due to plague. The Byzantines were constantly threatened on their frontier by Persians in the east and Slavs from the north. At the Battle of Yarmouk in 636, Muslims defeat an Eastern Roman army, and Constantinople would lose Syria and Palestine. Greek fire was used against the Arab fleets, which led, which tried to take Constantinople. Greek fire was made up of quicklime and sulfur and worked like a flamethrower. The Bulgars were the Asiatic people who arrived in the early 6th century, and by 679 they had defeated the Eastern Romans and settled south of the Danube. By the 8th century, the empire was reduced to the Eastern Balkans and Asia Minor. Unlike the West, church and state were one with the emperor as the head of the church chosen by god to rule so therefore he had absolute power god had commanded their state to preserve the faith orthodox christianity an iconoclast for the use of religious images especially in forms of icons sacred figures that charges of idolatry began to be heard emperor leo the third outlawed the use of icons. This outraged the monks and the Pope of the Western Church, later reversed in the 18th, 8th century. The damage had already been done between the two churches. Monks were ordered to abandon their vocation and also to marry. This is going to create a split between the Western and Germanic kingdoms. The rise of Islam. The Arabs were polytheistic but believed in one god that ruled all the other gods, and their chief god was called Allah. Each Bedouin tribe had a small sacred stone, and Mecca prospered from the caravan trade between the Mediterranean and Yemen. Muhammad and Islam. Muhammad had numerous encounters with Byzantine Christians and Jews in the Arab towns, and he was interested in both, that they both believed in one God. At the age of 40, he had a vision while meditating in a cave outside of Mecca. Here he said the angel Gabriel appeared again and again to Muhammad, telling him he was God's chosen messenger. Facing hostility, Muhammad and his followers left Medina on what would be known as the Higira, or flight. In Medina, he attracted many devoted followers. Islam means surrender to God. And those followers, Muslims, are ones that surrender. From Medina, Muhammad would lead raids against Meccan caravans, would later defeat the Meccans. And this led to the prestige of Islam. In 10 years, almost all the Bedouin tribes had accepted Islam. He entered Mecca in triumph 10 years later in 630 with 10,000 followers and destroyed the idols of the Kaaba. Belize. 
Abu Bakr orders all the words of Muhammad to be written down and gathered in books that would later become the Quran, which consisted of 114 chapters arranged according to length, not subject. It was written in Arabic and become the language of Islam and would follow everywhere that the Muslims conquered. There are five pillars of Islam. The first, there's no God but God, and Muhammad is his prophet. Prayer, five times a day, alms, fasting during Ramadan, and a pilgrimage to Mecca, if those who can afford it. Sharia is Islamic law, which forbidden to eat pork, gamble, drink alcoholic beverages, engage in dishonor, behavior. The spread of Islam. Razi was the Arab custom of raid of the struggle against their enemies. And jihad, mistakenly to mean holy war, actually means striving in the way of the Lord. It can also mean fair defense fighting. Conversion to Islam was voluntary. Those who chose not to were subject to Muslim rule, had to pay taxes. Attacks against Byzantines and Persians, Muslim soldiers believed that if they died in battle, that they would enter paradise. They were able to conquer the Persians in 637. Muhammad would die five years earlier in 632. Now came the question, who will succeed him as caliph? The first two caliphs ruled without any serious opposition, but the third, Uthman, 644 to 656, was a member of the Umayyad family, who was son-in-law to Muhammad. Ali of the Hanan clan, the Prophet's clan, was husband to Muhammad's claimed caliph. Uthman is assassinated and civil war erupts between the Umayyads and Ali. The Shi'at Ali the assassination of the Caliph Ali. Muwaja becomes now the Caliph in 661 and establishes the Umayyad dynasty. And Damascus would become its capital. The split of Islam. Shiites were the followers of Ali and Sunnites or Sunnis supporters of the Umayyads who conquered North Africa and much of Spain. At the Battle of Tours in 732, and also the attack on Constantinople and defeat in 718. And here we see the expansion of Islam, how it went very further through North Africa and up and conquered Spain, except this northern part. They were stopped here at Portiers, and this kept the Muslims from taking over the Franks. The Byzantine Empire was able to hold them off during this time as well. So this completes our study of the fall of Rome and the rise of the Western Church with the introduction of Islam.